Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of the Badger Call. My guest today is Chris Whiteley. Um, everyone knows Chris, he recently joined another club, came straight back. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get into that, Nick, Nick wants me to ask you about that a bit later. <laughs> um, so we'll start with um, getting a little bit, you know, a little bit about you. Um, okay. So, recently engaged. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Took the jump. All that, all the pressure from the lads probably caved in. Are, are you, caved you in too much of it. Are you using all the time to, pl- to plan in that? Uh, well, she is. Um, yeah, just she's... nod yet. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, not in so I don't know what I've actually signed up for. Yeah. So, <laughs> on the day, I'll be as surprised as anybody. Is it, ne- is it next year? Is it? Ah, uh, yeah, next July. On a Saturday, unfortunately. Oh, oh, oops. Oh, <laughs> oh, I know. I know. You get, you get, we're going to have to like think of an excuse like we're not allowed the ground that weekend. Or... <laughs> <laughs> it's, you need cinema night that night. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, not, that's not a valid excuse. No. Because they've, they've had that chat this year, um, trying to get the first team game rearranged. And um, Bram has suggested um, having the first team game at Whitemore. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's, imagine. That's, that's a genuinely true story. I'll tell the email. Like the first team will have to play at Wymore. I'd love to see that. Like, like, if, you, <laughs> if you're played to one side, the 30 yard boundary would literally be tucked in where the tree is. Yeah, the, the 30 yard boundary is 25 yards. <laughs> Could you imagine uh, like the kids? The kids would be targets as they're walking by. Uh, it, I'd, I'd absolutely love oh, it. Yeah. I think we did. We just need to have an inter-club game at Whitemore just for the sake of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, believe it. Imagine Charlie's on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god, that'd yeah. be awful. I'd It'd be funny play. if you if you can bat on Whitemore, you can bat you can bat anywhere. So to be fair, Nick needs a game on Whitemore, doesn't he? he just yeah, needs to know what we're all about. Yeah, he's, he's had it. He's had it easy so far playing on decent yeah, wickets yeah. and. He's, he's not really <laughs> experienced local cricket, has he? He's not. He's not no, played at the. Not white the, the real shit holes. He need, yeah, he needs to go and play. He needs to play on white. White more in the rain, where you get out and you have to walk seventy-five yards back to get the pads off. Yeah. In a in a right, the longest walk for a duck. It is a long walk. I can't forget the Very many long. other places where you'd have to walk. The worst walk is. I remember you are so- a kid walking. Sorry? It depends where you are at Sawley. That's a pretty long walk. If you're, um, yeah. you're on the third and fourth pitch, it's where you have to walk to the... to where the chick gets yeah. into the football. That's a pretty long walk. That is a long walk. I remember as a kid playing on Whitemore, getting out pretty early. I walked all the way to the changing rooms and they, were, they weren't uh, open. <laughs> I had to walk all the way back to get the key. And to do that walk twice. Is that is that when they have the, the shed as a scoreboard? Yeah, uh, yeah. Great. I, yeah, I yeah. remember playing the game there for Little Eaton. Like, if this shed's a rocking, don't come a knocking. I was like, what the hell am I playing? <laughs> oh, it's awful. It is all that little shed, especially if somebody else is in there with you. Yeah, they're terrible. I played Absolutely. there as well when... We were getting the ground in, rated at some point. So we got out um, side screens, the ones that were t- you tied to the ground with ropes. Yeah. And I reckon, I reckon it lasted one over. Just blew straight over. <laughs> done. I don't think I ever played against you at Whitemore. I don't think I've ever played... I don't think I've, I've played against... Um, like Panther and that. I don't think you were playing... Phil Hudson was keeping. I, so. Nah, I... Last time I played on Whitemore, when was it? Probably 15, 14, 15. Yeah, I mean, it would have been about, about the same time. I mean, yeah. We, we played so, a game and it was, it must have been like the 2006 World Cup or. Right. Something like it had been 2006 or 2004, maybe. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, which is obviously might have been before your time. But, um, we had to start the game early because um, England was playing at like four o'clock or four or five o'clock so everyone wants to watch it and we got rolled for about 30 anyway. 
So we could have just started at the normal <laughs> okay. time. We've still, still got there. Oh, 30. Oh. I think Dave, I think Dave been... Nightingale took a few. Probably did. Yeah, Dave, I Dave remember Dave. playing... Remember playing A and B fourths on there, and they got about three fifty, and I think we got bought out for about sixty on it. It's one of those, it's one of those places, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it plays better in the rain. Always has. <laughs> well, that kind of like leads on to the first question: is how long have you been playing cricket for? Have you? How long? What junior? Since juniors yeah, or yeah? Adult? When 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 do you reckon uh, you first picked up a bat? Have you always just have you always just played cricket? Played. I probably first went medis training when I was about nine because my brother played for the Quicks. So I probably went down about nine. Played my first game at nine, and then filling in for somebody in the Quicks, and then played ever since. Really, had a bit of a <clears throat> when I was seventeen when I was trying to decide between football and cricket. Had a bit of a strange summer where I didn't train, but. Yeah. Probably had one of my best years, so I was a bit, a bit of a weird one, a bit of a Dan Kelly. Don't train and yeah, play back. Don't sort train, of. don't train. Yeah, I've, I've, I've so, never seen the point of it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so with a few, what one up, just short of twenty years, eighteen. And did you start playing because your brother played? Yeah, we used to play in the garden all the time, and then my brother did, went. Did, so your, dad ever, like, oh, did your dad ever play cricket? Yeah, I played up in Yorkshire. No, did they? Yeah, uh, bold military medium. Yeah, it's keep, kind of like, Matt Jones esque keeper stood up. Put it, put it on the line. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. Took a, that, lot, took a lot of wickets, apparently. Were they just like dead, dead the batsmen, or or forward defensive? Yeah, he used to tee off, apparently. Really? His cover drive used to go through mid wicket. Good effort. Good effort. So, for your, for your cover drive. Yeah, yeah. He, I think he could play a bit. Never got a hundred though. I like to rub that in his face. <laughs> but you probably got one. Yeah, he's. What? Well, I think about three now. Really? Yeah, I'm sure I went two nil up, and then he might have even equalised. What are you on now? I went two. Uh, four, I think, or five. What's your, what's your best? What's your best hundred? My best. Uh, I quite like the one at Homewood because it was on an absolute shit hole. Yeah, me, me, and me and Nick were discussing Homewood earlier. So like, like, but last year's Homewood saying it's like your score runs there, you, you're happy. Yeah, <laughs> like, I used to do all right against them. The, well, they they always turn up against Meadows, don't they? The yeah. Few games I've seen against Homewood, they they just turn up. There's nothing. There's nothing like. There's no animosity towards like towards Meadows and Homewood. No. Just, they just they just love it, don't they? they and I don't think they realise how realise it. It's bizarre because the first time we went up there, we did all right. I remember that was when I got hundred, and I remember me and Slats put on about hundred and sixty. Yeah. And then I remember, because Nick, I remember Nick texted me in the week saying, all right, I'll bat four for you to bolster the middle order. And he got a golden duck. Brilliant. <laughs> Smashed it. But that was the day uh, DK slept all innings on the sofa. That's right. What was, it been that, was that four? Was that three? Uh, three. Was that three? That was three. Yeah, yeah and I don't think we even managed to bowl them out that day. Uh, I don't think we've ever beaten them. I mean, the, the, I scored both games last year against Homewood, and mm. they were probably the two worst performances I've seen. But it's, they're in our heads, aren't they? It's bizarre. Yeah. It, I, it's what I was saying to Nick that they're not. It's not them getting in our heads. It's the way around. No. It's, just like, it's just a mental. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like you should beat. You feel like you should beat them. Like where they, where they are. They're not. They're not the greatest team in the world. You like you turn up. And they look pretty village, but they've got some decent bit like the Hortons. They're just yeah. they're decent cricketers. They're not world beers. They just they just know what they're doing, don't they? Yeah, so, like is it Gav the bowler, the seamer? Uh Jamie, I think the you know, Oh Jamie, yeah. Like he always has a field day. 
against yeah. us, whichever the seamer is, always has a field day. Yeah, Hoop, hoops it and moves it off the seam. Does it just does it? It just turns into Jimmy Anderson. It's unreal. It's unreal. I, I, like I said, I used to do quite well against them until this time when I smashed that full toss straight to that chunky yeah. lad. It just hit yeah. him straight in the gore. It's weird though, isn't it? How a team has that hold over you. Yeah. And they're always yeah. really nice to you as well, which I think unsettles us a little bit. <laughs> they are, they are, because they're, they're a nice bunch of lads. Like, they yeah, bit, yeah. They're, just a, they're a nice bunch of lads, but you're like, how is this, how is this happening? Like, it's, yeah, it's like when either side of playing us, they get absolutely battered. Yeah. And then the week the play us just absolutely tear us apart. So strange. So yeah, when, it is wrong. So junior cricket, did you did you always play for Meadows as at junior cricket? Yeah, played for Meadows and played for school in Amber Valley. Is it? So always used to open the bat in them in juniors. You're not the Standard fancy doing junior it prerogative. Huh? You're not the fancy opening anymore, do you? You like behind them, yeah, well, We tried it, didn't we, for one game and I got golden duck. <laughs> try, try, try again. Uh, yeah, like when I was at Ambergate, I used to open for them. So what, it, what age did you move to Ambergate? Is uh, that when Medic dropped down to the one? Yeah. Two? So I think it was my first year at uni, so nineteen. Yeah. So I didn't play heaps that year though, because I'll Football, because that's when I was with Mick over. So I didn't play loads that year, and then year after I played seriously when things didn't go quite to plan at sports. Yeah. And um, he used to open for him then. It was only when I became captain at Meadows, I ended up batting three, because obviously we had Brookie and Slaps. Yeah. So uh, I just dropped to three, and is that, went from there. Is, is that when the, like, the Meadows like, reform started when you came back? You yeah. Came I, yeah, I came back when I was in Australia, so 2015, I think I came yeah. back. Because I just thought, like, from the outset, so I used to play from on Sunday, that there was too much talent to be a Division 6 team. Like, having yeah. Joe Slater, Mike Cox, Jonesy, DK, all in Div 6 was a bit of a... Yeah. bit of a cross, really. So, and then, yeah, I went from there, really. The lads bought yeah. into what I tried to do. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't, I wasn't aware of anything what went on at Meadows around, around that time and like when, like the big rebuild started. But from what I gather, like you and your dad and the committee at the time, like really, really rebuilt the club. Yeah, like, like Med Medis, year. Medis for years, I've this like horrible reputation. Like I ain't never yeah. played against them once or twice, like in like the early two thousands, and. Yeah, I, I can't remember any of the play. I can't remember any of the players, kind of, but it, they just have this reputation about them. And I think yeah. some people still have this reputation. It's trying to get past that, don't they? Yeah, it was because like, that was one of the things when I first came back. Like we had this horrendous reputation, and I was just like, we're not those sort of people. So why, why don't we try and change it? So I had, a, I had a big thing about staying for a drink, and I know like it's a little thing, but staying at an away ground for a drink or two. Like, suddenly people realise you're not a bunch of dickheads. Yeah. And, like, I mean, like, we, when I was at Little Eaton, we, we started playing against Meadows second team more regularly in, like, about 2012-13. Like, they yeah. played against, like, Jim and Nobby and that quite a few mm. times. And they had the same kind of thing. Like, they, they stayed at Little Eaton. I mean, Little Eaton didn't really have a bar. We had, like, a few cans stashed away. Which, which, <laughs> yeah. They, they, would, they would stay for a drink, and I'm guessing that's, I mean, like you instilled in the club, and like, yeah, and like a big thing that I noticed with Meadows, they were just they were just more professional. It felt it felt more professional playing against Meadows when you yeah. were in, when you came up against like everyone turned up at the same time, everyone was wearing the training kit, and like sometimes the performance on the field didn't look professional, but I think yeah, can, you can be beat, can't you? You can be beat as a team if someone yeah. turns up. Like and start running around the outfield doing warm ups and doing training drills before the game. You're like, we're gonna get panned here today because these yeah, look. It, is, they, they it was a shift in mindset. Like, I probably did five. If we weren't quite there, but like people actually started coming to training, which was a big deal. Yeah. And then 
I'd say Div 4 was the big stride forward because obviously we managed to get Rob back, yeah. J-Rag, and then uh, JP was like a big driver behind, like getting the kit, all the same yeah. kit, etc. And he, he had a big drive behind that side of things. And I think once we start to get that, everyone's the same mentality. Yeah. As we yeah. used, <clears throat> I guess it's drifted slightly now because of a bit of a golf in two and six. But it was very much yeah. one club. Anyone can slot into the first team. Anyone can drop down. And yeah. one used to buy into that. So, yeah, it was like, quite well. I mean, we've got a good setup down there now. It would be nice to, to get all the teams close together. Not in any divisions in life, but like getting the third team back for a drink. But yeah, like I discussed with Nick, it's hard on the third team because they're... They've reduced their overs of the games, but they're starting later, so it finishes at the same time anyway. So they're not, yeah. There's no benefit. I don't get that. They should start at the same time so they can come back to their clubs yeah. for the last hour. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. And like, and uh, trying to get something to get them to come back. I know like, when they're white more, they, they like to go back to the Greyhound. I mean, the Greyhound are one of the sponsors. And a lot of them, their friends, their friends would uh, go in the Greyhound a lot. So you can't. Kind of, I mean, there's a lot of kids playing for him, you're not you don't expect them to come back come back down. Yeah. Really. I mean I'd be the advantage of getting a second pitch from the Yeah. It, yeah, it's just one it's hard, isn't it? But it would be nice to see them back just because then you start to get to know some of the youngsters a little bit and then it's yeah. not a good deal when they come into the twos and ones. Yeah, I mean the, um especially like the under fifteens at the moment of last year's under fifteens. They've uh, yeah. they've got like Got their own like family, aren't they? They're, like all the parents are very close. Yeah. yeah. So they start playing cricket together. Obviously, the parents start coming to the game. It does. It does it, you do get. A, you do get them coming down. No, it's not saying they don't. They don't come down. Yeah. But when when the clubhouse when it when it's like a, like a day like today, you want to get a ticket, and clubhouse is packed. Well, that's it, isn't it? It's, Especially like if you are having some ball. success. Yeah, if you want some success as well, it's nice to get everyone down. And yeah, like we all know that what it's like when you win in comparison to losing. But yeah, end of the day, any amateur cricket you play, you play for the beer after, don't you? That's yeah. the reality. You're there I mean, for the social. Yeah, basically, like I mean, I've I've played cricket for this would have been my twenty first year of playing cricket. It's a it's a long time. So and I've won the yeah. league, won, won cup. So I'm not really. Like I am motivated still to win stuff, but it's like yeah, I I go. It's more for the social side. Hmm. Uh, it's like like breaking my breaking man last year and just having to sit and watch. Like I loved it. Yeah. yeah. Whereas you're still at the age where it's like you still want to play competitively. Like you want yeah. to play like, the highest level, highest level possible. Like, yeah. I mean, this, we're the a good team this year, for the first team. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we've done well. It's... Like, yeah, like, Shelley and Lizzie look class acts. Like, I don't know, I don't yeah. know how much you saw it. Shelley of your few winter nets with Duffield. Yeah, it's class, class act. Sim, just simple technique, yeah. you know. It's, and that's the thing, it just looks really basic but yeah. it's it does the job so they should look classy like him and him and my they seem like proper cricketers as well like they get local cricket like it's, yeah. not, it's not just about playing it's everything now they've got I mean, they've got to they they signed in yeah what, like december early january yeah they started in perfectly haven't they, haven't they? They've both, they've yeah i've known i've game. known mike longer than shelly i, I used to play rep with she, uh mike Played Amber Valley all the way through. Yeah, he's he's class act, right? He's a proper yeah. player, decent bloke. Yeah, but, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've had a few drinks with him. We have this Christmas Christmas drink. Yeah, he's, he's like a good life to have around as well. Yeah, he's, yeah, they're both well, they're both sound, aren't they? And both, I think they both get what we're trying to do as well. Which, yeah, and I think is what we want. Yeah, I think like. Like working with Paul, I think mean, I think Paul makes a massive difference. Yeah. Um. 
I mean, I, I know you were a big pusher of getting a coach at the club, like. Yeah. And I think we've found someone now who who get who gets who gets modern day cricket gets. Well, yeah. he's still playing. He's still playing. He's still playing at the highest level um, in local cricket. Um, so he gets what what it's about. He he, see, he knows his stuff, doesn't he? Yeah, and he gets. I guess because he's been at Spondon, where really they are the model that every yeah. local club wants to be, aren't they? But they, they, they they've had a, like an attitude change. Like they always used to be the the club who like full of dickheads. Like they seem to have like on the face of things. It seems to have got a lot better now. Like, oh yeah, we had a run when. Um, like Bear was like when me and Bear were both captain. Um, we used to play every obviously every pre season, and it was always it was always a sound game. Like I've known Bear for a few years, but like they are the model, like how they come across and how they do things. It's it just it just the whole setup, their whole social media setup, their whole youth team setup. Like yeah, it's 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 what it's what you every club needs to aspire to do, like. Exactly, especially like for them where they're so close to the likes of Oprock and like San Diego's not a million miles away. To have yeah. the amount of juniors they have yeah. is like a pretty incredible effort. Yeah, it really, it really is. It. And like, they had, they had a big rebuild there. Like, obviously, like, I don't know, did you play at their old ground? No, I've only yeah. played at the new one. Yeah, the, their old ground was, it was nice. But um, it was just like, it was just in the middle of the estate, and it was quite, it was quite small grave. I played there on a, on a red hot day. There was no, there was no hide in there, no shade anywhere. Really? I played there on a red hot day. We got, we got panned that day. We got panned most of the time. <laughs> really, most teams. But, <laughs> but yeah, that, they, they, they are a decent, decent club now. So they, yeah. They seem that to go about the right, just... they, they seem to go the right way about things. They don't go around stealing juniors. And, don't go around heffing around other clubs like a few other clubs do. Like, they yeah, they seem to respect the they respect yeah. the lines, don't they? Like they don't expect you to chase after their players and they yeah. won't do the same back. That's how it comes across. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean I've I've there's a few clubs around where you've heard like heard like the things what they say about other clubs, they like they talk about how rather than telling them selling them the club like Saying how good your club is, like, we, yeah, like we we sell our club, and we we show our yeah. like we've got a decent junior setup, we've got a decent, well, got the best ground, one of the best grounds in the league. Um, but yeah, some other clubs who just say like, no, that shit, don't don't play for them, come play for us instead. No. Yeah, yeah, there's a bit of that and a bit of brown envelope. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's going to be a lot of bang average cricketers out there this season. Are going to be a bit short of money. Mm. Definitely, uh, that that's the worst part of cricket. Yeah, but average players getting yeah. a load of money. But going on to medals, um, bit more. What what would you say your favourite moment has been at medals? There's, 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 there's been there's been a lot. There's, there's been a lot of. I mean, there's oh. thirty four finals recently, and there's league wins. There's big performances at away grounds. Yeah, oh, that's tough. Um, two spring to mind. Obviously, the clown one this year, like that individual yeah. performance as a team, because obviously Nick got 60, but obviously then Cox, he had his match changing 30 off 16 balls or whatever it was. Yeah. And like, and then obviously Chol to soak up the pressure in the last over and do what he did. Yeah. Really, like, yeah, that that moment we won that game, the shot wow. over cover. Like, I've never, I've never seen a team react in that way. Like yeah. with Meadows, like everybody running onto the pitch. It was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Probably, like as an individual game, that was, that was definitely up there. It was wow, this is. This is what it's, this is what you've been working for. Yeah. And then I think another big moment for me was when 
we won Div Four. Like I know it was Div Four, but we're, it like proved we're onto something. Like we destroyed everyone in our wake, and we were the side that we started yeah, to be. I I came down to it. That was the year Little Ian were pretty much folding. I came to a few games that season. Like I think it came to the first four or five games when yeah. Little Ian didn't play. I came to the last couple, and I think every game you turn up and you're panicking people. Panicking people. I mean, yeah. Did you play Duffield and bowl them out for twenty six or something? Yeah. I think I turned. I, I think, think I turned up the last wicket. <laughs> yeah. Funny. I think I uh, like that year. Obviously, it was Nick's first year as well. And obviously, to begin with, obviously it was. I think it was getting starts, but it wasn't quite kicking on. Yeah. And then, and then obviously at Chesterfield, we knocked off two forty, I think, or two fifty. I've, I've talked. I was talking to Nick earlier, and he he said he he felt massive pressure that that year because he was like because he was like the youngest in the team, and he felt like he had something to prove. Yeah. Um, and I think it affected his game quite a lot. And he, well, I think. I think that 100 was the turning point when him and Jay put on that pot because what we were I think we were 20 for we were 20 for 3 I think and then him and Rob Nick and Rob put on about 40 or 50 yeah and then Jay and Jay and Nick didn't look back but I think Jay got out because he was knackered on about 80 <laughs> but that, that was a big moment for him as well like obviously that was his first year and then to do that really got us up and running Chesterfield that year was one of the hardest one of the toughest teams to play. Yeah. So, yeah, because they had Michael Dean playing for him. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a class act. And, uh, I spoke about it, yeah, him. like, especially then, well, that was a good few years ago. And that was, it might have been his first year in the twos. Yeah. And I remember, I remember him yorking me, and <clears throat> it was going in at middle and leg. And took off with a Yorker, like it swung and did, like it completely did me. And I was like, shit, like, what is this? We, but, we, we played against him for Little Eaton um, a few years before that, and he was playing second, but he was only playing because he'd been injured. So he was only coming mm-hmm. off at about seven or eight paces, and he was just making everyone look absolutely average. Like, yeah. He, he can do some stuff with a ball. Like, he, yeah, he's, yeah, he. Nice bloke. Like this, nice yeah, like this year, obviously we played him at their place and um, I drove him down the ground for four and then next ball flicked him over square leg for four and then that next ball he came off his long run and I'm not joking, he rolled me a bounce and I got to here and it's just like yeah. fizzed oh, me. I was like, Jesus. Yeah, it, um, me and Jamie played up at um, Queen's Park and he did the same to somebody. Uh, I think Jamie might have been out there batting at the time. And he um it was quite quite late on we were batting out for the draw and he comes he comes running in and I bloke edged it to the keeper, not walked. And he like and he went he went mentally, his face went bright red, he like shouting at everybody. <laughs> then walks back, gets in his longer running comes running in. And he bowled this bounce and he he's pitched a good foot and a foot and a half outside off stump and just swung in just followed the batsman and he's like, I don't know how he's not hit him in the head. Because he's just like he's just he's like body line, he just what, I don't know yeah. how that happened. Uh, it's one of the best bounces I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Like, when he bowled at me, like, I, he was bowling off a shorter run-up, as you'd expect. But then he, when he went off the long run-up, I was like, Jesus, like, that shot. Yeah. Uh, the who, face who, him in his palm would have been interesting. Who's, who's the best cricketer you play against in local cricket? Best. That's a toughie. Oh, he's had the best performance against Jeffy. Uh, I saw Matt Lineker playing against him at Ambergate and he'd been on the sash all of Friday. I think he'd been at the races or somewhere and he hit 180 on the Saturday against us. And, yeah. oh, the hitting was so clean. So clean. Like, he's class. The worst was we played him in, a, you know, where Div 1 Prem where you do the <laughs> round robins. Yeah. 20 days, we nicked him off first ball of the game in the final in the like our little semi on our day. Yeah, and umpire gave him not out and he bludgeoned 70 off 30 balls or something. It was, he, it he's a freak. Seems, it always seems to be the better players, doesn't it? We played against, I played against Andy Layton once, I had him stumped um, on about five or six. And he was, he, you know, when he's like, he's not even close, he's 
He like even yeah. even, even when they said not that he still wasn't back in the crew. Yeah. He went he went on to get 104 and he came in, in the he came in, in the 31st over. He got 104. Wow. It, it was six wow. last balls in to bring up his ton. And like that's impressive. It was brutal. It was brutal. Yeah. It, 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 brutal. But it took it took that fifteen overs took a long time as well because he kept pointing fields at Little Eaton like over the road. Like like don't need to put it that far, do you? Just just chip it onto the roof. <laughs> like, yeah. Stop putting the far. It's a long way. It's a long. I played against Dave Smith as well. And at Ambergate, I know it's not a huge hit. Hit the first ball of the game for six over extra cover. Like, that, yeah, that was, it was ridiculous yeah. as well. Yeah. Like that year I played in Div 1, there were some seriously good players. Like that Mayor, the Mayor Hayside that year, they had Matt Dorick, Nick will know Matt Dorick, plays, yeah. plays Essendon, I think, or somebody like that. And he was sharp. He nicked me off twice. In a row in the same game, keeper dropped in first slip, dropped down. He's going to get about 40, but Jesus, he had a quick bounce as well. That was sharp. I feel like the standard of cricket has dropped a lot. Like, yeah, like I was saying, like I, I played like quite high level with, with Little Eaton, and even in like Division Four, you used to get some absolutely rapid bowlers. I mean, I don't know if you ever played against AD Kershaw, played at Cromford, yeah, yeah, and he, he was quick. He cut. And that was in Division Four. Like, if 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 he'd been playing, I think he still does play somewhere. But if he'd been playing in his prime now, he'd be playing Div Div One Prem, and he was a standard player in four at the time. You know, like, yeah. I think, I think what's not helping though is like how long football season is. I think you're losing some good cricketers to that. Yeah, you got. And then, like, I mean, Mickle like Kieran, like Kieran Preston, for example, Kieran, like Mickle over. They both go, don't they? Yeah, and like like for Kieran Preston, who obviously plays a decent level on football, yeah. like he's a he should be playing prem really. Oh yeah, and and yeah, he what you plays ten games? He's not begrudging for playing with his mates, can you? But... No, but you're losing that sort of caliber of player, aren't you? To yeah, because obviously they're playing football, and it's a tough one. Like I don't, it just feels like, and I think one of the biggest problems has been like the better clubs ciphering. Players from the lesser teams, yeah. should I say, and then taking them to their club, and then they sit in their twos or whatever. And it's I think, like, yeah, I, think, I think if you're not going to try and push yourself to play at the highest level, you may as well just play with your local team, with your mate, with your mates. Like, yeah. you'll, you'll enjoy it more than yeah being at a club like trying to push for a first team, but not really knowing anything. Yeah. Cr- cricket is. It's predominantly it's a very clicky sport. Like you've got to know the right people, especially in the higher levels. Like, and your face doesn't fit, you don't get picked. Like, it's, yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, and then you're not really, you're not, you haven't got it in medals. It's not, not a problem there. But I think a lot of the higher clubs, some of them yeah. do really have a, a clicky problem. But yeah, well, yeah. You think about some of the lads in the prem, not mention any names, that you see that are playing in there. And they're literally in there because they're, they're on somebody else's coattails and they're in yeah. the little clique and they get to play every week. Yeah. And you think about some of the lads that aren't and you're like, how's that? Yeah, I mean, there's a club, there's a club at the moment who, up the road, they, they, they're they like that. They've got one player and he signs five, six players and the old leader yeah. join, join the same club and he, just, he knackers that club when they when they get fed up. Yeah, well, that's it, isn't it? And, I, mean, I think that like, happens quite a bit. Like I think yeah. the prem. I don't know. I might be wrong. I've not played the prem, but it looks it looks very clicky with some sides, especially when you see some yeah. of the lads in the second teams. You're like, how are they not in the prem side? And yeah, X, Y, and Z are in. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, but, the other question we got is, what was your first cricket bat? Do you remember what your first cricket bat was? Oh, it was this terrible reader's bat. I had the reader's. It was the blue one. It had a grey grip. It was terrible. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I had a breeder. Hurt, hurt your hands to hit the ball. I I, I got it from a um, there's a shop in Nottingham. I can't. There's a sports shop in Nottingham. And um, I went there when I was like 13 years old. I had this bat brought in and it was like 35 quid. And I was like, this is bat class. It's 
best back they've got in there. And I've signed, I signed for Dali Abbey Juniors. I went down to the net, first ball, I was like, crack. <laughs> he just said, he's massive yeah. back. Yeah. No, he's like, yeah, yeah. I remember that. It was awful. And then, the, um, there's a couple of lads there who had some decent bats. They were like, they're just like, you know, <laughs> picking up yeah. like, the best bat in the world. <laughs> Because I remember like not being able to hit off the square, and I thought, oh, it's because I'm terrible. Yeah. And then I remember getting a new bat, like in the following winter, I got an absolute belter, and uh, like ball just flew. Like it was a different game. And the whole season, I've been using this horrible minging bat. Yeah. Um, what's the best bat you've had? Oh, the best bat. Uh, it would either be a GM hero or um, the or the I, yeah yeah the orange grip one but he had it near the back end of his career yeah, yeah. for England uh, or the, probably the best would be the icon that uh, boys gave me I don't know whose it was he gave it me to use it's one game the first it's game about something yeah, first game of pre-season, I think I hit 50 yard against Spondon, the year at 100 at Homewood. And after that, I was like, I'm, I'm having this. And it was it was a one, one of them. All very thick, but it just absolutely flew. Yeah, I, what I, about I, you? What was your? It was a Slavinger. I got, I can't which one it was. But um, got it, Charlie Gwillem, who he played little in for a while, played Ashover. Um big tall right arm and bowl like really deeply yeah. double bowlers. And then he used to get bats cheap. Don't know how he got it. He just turned up in his car, opened his boot and there'd be twenty cricket bats in the back. And I got brought one and that was only about fifty or sixty quid. And it was I had about three months with it. And I had like such I had it hit about seven or eight fifty I was playing about midweek cricket as well and I was just Flying through, I played, played up at Alton for the first team, Lily and first team. And then, um, I don't know what, John O'Clair, or someone, someone like a quick opening bowler. I was just putting, oh, him, back yeah, over his head, putting him back over his head for six. I hit um, 50 off about 30 balls. Um, nice. J- Jamie was playing the game, like everyone struggled. We were, I went in at um, number 10, and then. Um, I get a 50 by, the, by the number 10. And number 11 came, came in. Craig, I don't know if you've met Craig Ball. Um, yeah, yeah, I know Craig Ball. Right? I know Craig Ball. He, um, he, co- he comes out to bat number 11. Very, he's not a very good batsman. And he goes, right, you're, you're on for 100 here. I can, I can see it. I'll just stay with you. You just, you just carry, it, carry on. Bear in mind, I've been dropped about five times at this point. And he's like, yeah. And he got cleaned up, cleaned up first ball. I was like, oh, <laughs> but I, 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 I had it for about three months. And the toe snapped on it, and then yeah, I've never had a bat, but like I quite like my bat I've got at the moment. That one, that one, one on Instagram last year. Yeah. That's decent. That's a decent bat. That's been yeah. nice. I remember. Sorry, I remember having an SXI. Do you remember those yeah. Slazengers, Ian Bow? Yeah. I had one of them. It might, it might have been that. It might have been that one actually. Now, I remember. I got my first hundred with wow. With a SXI, I was batting and I snapped the handle middle of the innings. Yeah. And then I got some other lads. I think, they, I think, the, mid, I think the, the bats were good. I think, I, I think they were just so crap, they were yeah. so lightweight. Yeah, like, I remember like went for a pool shot and the handles were slight, like, exploded. And yeah. obviously, it's like four, there's a 14 year old kid, and you're like, what, what do I do? And then some other kid gave me his, the same bat, and that was class as well, to be fair. But my mind. Mine broke at Alice Street, um, that, the bottom of the bat went, um, and I was, I was actually motoring then, I was on a, I was on the 60 or 70 at Alice Street, thinking, this is my first 100 here, got perfect, yeah. bounds, like, short bat, short bounds, I'm, I'm on for this, and that, the handle went off, no, the toe went on the toe, and MJ brought his bat, he was like, I was like, can I have someone's bat, MJ brought it down, he had mongoose, where he'd been given by someone right. like shirt, but like, the proper, the proper mongoose, like, the, the, oh, that no. long, long handle and short, Thing. First ball, I have to try to chip one down the ground. Middle of it, and got caught on the bound, caught out on the boundary. I was trying to chip it down oh. the ground. Like, have you ever got a? Have you ever got a hundred? 
Have you ever got a hundred? Yeah. Well, well, on the score, on the score, the score card, yeah. The Sunday ones. Yeah, score card on a Saturday. Yeah. Uh, in no, Saturday. No, uh, seventy-six. I think it's my highest. Um, right. I was looking that day. I dropped about ten times that day. <laughs> um, nice. I should have got one out. There's been a few where I've been in the zone and then threw it away. It's like Amber, Amber, Amber Gates was um, Little Eaton. And yeah. I was, on, I was on 60 without even knowing it. And I was, they just kept putting it outside off and just kept drilling them through covers. And I'm not, I'm not what the best cover driver in the world, but I was drilling them through covers before. Yeah. And then they brought this um, leg spinner on and I put one pretty much on the train tracks. And the, nice. And the next ball, I hit it straight up in the air. And they've had this boat, and I've, I've, never, I've never seen him playing for Ambiguate before, and I've never played, seen him playing against him since. It was just this, this old boat. And he went trotting around the boundary, and he just caught it one-handed. And it's come down with snow on it. And I was absolutely... Oh, I, I, was, I hit it that high, I thought he was he'd gone, he'd gone over, over the train tracks. Oh, God, that's brilliant. Right. Well, but I got out of 97 once against Swanick. Nicked a short wide one off the leg spinner. I'd been punishing him all day and then just snicked it. And then the worst had to be at Ambergate for four meadows two years ago when I hit it wide of mid wicket and came back for two. I got in easy and Scotty G got run out by about three yards and I was stranded on 94. Yeah, I had a, I got I got told him to try and play in a big shot that day. I don't know why I did. That came in after that. <laughs> Was that, oh, that. was that the same game? Was that the same when we we should have had we, we bowled really well near the end. We bowled like crap most of the day, then bowled we got really close. Yeah, to get I, think it, I think you're in before G. Yeah, it must be. Yeah. G yeah, was last yeah. man, but like, I thought it was an easy two, and obviously not. And he didn't send me back, which would have been probably. But it was my own fault. It was one of them as well. You know, when you just seen it like a beach ball. Yeah, so some days, yeah, some days you're, just, you're just in the zone, aren't you? Like, no, no, yeah, yeah. nothing coming out of the middle, there's everything coming out of the middle, that's it. Yeah, yeah, and you're hitting it exactly where you want to hit it. There's yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that must be like what Nick Man's life's like. Yeah, yeah, I think the last, the last time it happened to me was when we played, when we played the, the seconds up at Stanton a few couple of years ago, and we were 50. Two all out, and I got thirty six of them. And I, yeah. I felt so good that day. You're like yeah. you know, you know, when you're walking out and the back, the back feels light in your hand. You, you just know yeah. you're four runs. Because some days you can walk out and you're like, I'm getting out first ball. And it's like it doesn't matter what what ball he bowls, I'm not not lasting on. But yeah, some days you, you're proper in the zone, aren't you? Yeah, it's weird though, isn't it? I just keeping, clicked. Though. Yeah, thing, keeping like. Some days you're like, you know everything's just going to hit the gloves. You just feel, you can feel yeah. really good, can't you? And then some days you're like... All the days it's a chore, isn't it? It's it tough. Is like, I mean, I've, I've always found like, the higher up the divisions you go, it kind of gets a little bit more, e- more easy. Yeah. Because I play, because I watch you in some of the games and I have to feel them down, like, like flying down, like, try and stop them. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm- when I keep on a Sunday, it always frustrates me. Cause... Oh, that, that game we played up at Mansfield. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because the thing um, is, for me, I, like in the Sunday league, like everyone you could stand up to, like by yeah. that day, child, but everyone, but they're so far down leg, and yeah. it goes just by on a Sunday, doesn't it? And it's like... Yeah, it's frustrating. It is frustrating. But, it's um, so annoying. Yeah. Um, so go, going on from a rant about leg side wise and that we're going to room 101 your three yeah. things you, you hate or want to change about cricket um, have, you, have you watched room ever watched room 101 nah sorry mate so basically you, you give me your things and I decide whether they go in the bin or they, they stay yeah right okay I'm going to play, I'm going to play God here okay uh, so, um, what, what's, your, one. what's your first offering my first one is I hate that um, there's a difference in points whether you bats first or second. I hate that. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. despise it. Because like, cause if you are a better um, 
bowling side or whatever, or you're good at chasing, why should you be punished for being good at being a chasing side? It, it's yeah. obviously we're not, but there's days, isn't there, where you want to chase against somebody yeah. and you get punished for it. And it's, yeah, that's one of my biggest frustrations. Because yeah. you get in, you turn up and you see, see what the track's like and you're thinking, yeah, I want to bowl first on yeah. that. But yeah, yeah, I can, yeah. No, that, that's cricket, isn't it, for me? Like, the last day of the season, you need 27 points and you win the toss on an absolute road. Yeah. You don't. You don't. Not gonna want. You might not want to bat first because you have to bowl us. And it's it's a bit of a punishment. I it frustrates me. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. That can get. They can go in the bin. Because it's like are you, I don't get me wrong. I get. I get uncovered wickets where batting first was classed as being brave, being positive. But yeah. not very often does a club wicket die after the, 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 the problem The problem you got now is if someone prepares a track what's god awful. They get points taken off them. Yeah. So, so why should the points be different whether you battle ball first or yeah. you get, or get put in? Like, they, I mean, it, the, to be honest, they made it a bit fairer that um, maybe year where they, even if you lost the toss, you could still get 27. When, yeah. But, but yeah, if you opt to bat second, you, you, know, you get five points less. Yeah, then, it's... You then go out and it's, it's an absolute pudding or the, the pitch then massively deteriorates. Like, it looked like you, you guys had bad in the second innings and it's an absolute minefield. But well, that's it. It's like, it's like that day at Clown. Okay, we chose to bat second, but the wicket got lower and slower all all day. Yeah. And one ball bowled quite well that day. And it's like, you're getting punished five points for it. You've just knocked off their score. I think we might, I don't know if we lost less wickets or not in the end, but... Regardless, you've knocked off their score and you get punished by points for yeah. doing what you want to do in that situation. Yeah, having a cricket game. Whereas, yeah. whereas they would have liked yeah. batted first anyway, and then they got it's bizarre. It's yeah, yeah, strange, strange that all. Yeah, I agree with that. Can, that can go in the that can go in the bin. That can go in the bin. Yeah. Uh, what's your second offering? Uh, mine would be like having some proper fielding restrictions or yeah. like first 10 or 15 like you have the ring and it's pointless it's R4 in at all times but I just think like bring people into the game something like a Dutch who you might usually hide at 7 yeah. and to, for quick runs at the end you might open with him if it had, you knew you had 10 overs to yeah. watch it and this is the kind of thing what I was talking about with Nick earlier like because you have like the 46 overs you can't you gotta differentiate what when to bring in building restrictions. Because it's yeah. like there's no like real percentage, is it? Like no. twelve and a half over twelve and a half overs or something. But yeah, I think it'd make cricket. I mean, you have it in the cups, you have it in the, you can play on Saturday yeah. not have them, then you play in a cup on Sunday. And you got building restrictions all of a sudden. And yeah, and it just changed the tactics slightly, wouldn't it, from some there's a, side? There's a, there's a lot of captains around the division. They were on cricket brain. They'd have to have something to think about. They'd have to... So they, they turn up every week yeah. and they bowl the same bowlers. They have the same fields. But if they had to think about it, they get, they'd probably get yeah. the tactics would get exposed. Right? And you'd, you'd see people with genuine cricket brains driving... Right. Yeah, it just it changed it up a bit, wouldn't it, in how people went about the game slightly. Well, like, I, I think that, and for me, I just think if you did that throughout the leagues, worked out whatever percentage it is or whatever, right through, like even in the lower leagues, like yeah. I'm sure some of them would like to play cricket that matches what they play at pro level or whatever and just well, have this, something. This is, the, this is the thing that I'm talking about with Nick. The way you're going to get players, the game developing over the years, over the next few years, is by being more professional, having, like, I don't know, you're going, you're going to work on a Monday, you go, oh, how did, did you play cricket the weekend? Yeah, 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 how'd you get on? Oh, I've got a winning draw. Oh, you won. Oh, no. No, 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 no. we've got, we've got, we've got <laughs> no, we've, we've got more runs than them, and they didn't score as many runs as us, but we didn't win. And like, oh, so you got the, you, so you tied? Like, no, 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 that's different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Well, it yeah. is that, isn't it? Like some weeks you score more runs than them, take more wickets than them, yeah, you've not won. Yeah, you get about the same amount of points. <laughs> it's it's farcical. Yeah. Like, and I don't get like for me, I said mentioned it before in the past when we spoke about it at the club. Have ten points for a win, and then five batting, five bowling. Yeah. What I don't yeah I don't know why twenty seven points or whatever you, or whatever you want it to be and then but yeah. those five batting yeah. points you have to be within seventy five fifty twenty five fifteen and five or whatever to get maximum so you actually have to almost yeah win the game if you get your maximum I know or whatever just I know, it's just know. so annoying isn't it and those teams that you know aren't going to try and win the game from ball one. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It's exactly the same conversation I had with Nick. It's like you know, don't you? Like you could, we could go out on Saturday, score two hundred and fifty, three hundred, and you know, you know from ball one what their intentions are. You're like this is going to be a long day. Like I mean, no intention to go for. It. They're going to finish hundred and twenty for eight or something like that. Yeah, it's the same. Like you get because then you get punished for getting too many runs. Mm-hmm. So you have to. So you then have to be brave and declare, and then. Give them more opportunities. It's bizarre. Like, yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, like if you're a good enough bat, if you're a good enough batting side, you should be able to bat side out of the game and not be punished. Yeah, whilst yeah. also at least, good at, least enough, go, at least go for the runs and then like yeah. walk out of the draw. Whilst at the same time, if you are a better bowling side than you are batting, you shouldn't be punished for wanting to bowl a side out and then not come off. It's yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, it's fucked with me. Yeah, I, I don't know if you've ever been to those rules revision meetings. The problem they've got, all the, those rules have been set for 20, 30 years, and it's the same 20, 30, 30 like, people going to the meetings and voting for those rules, and they're, like, they're just so out of touch with cricket now. But Because like a lot of committees yeah. are made up of like a lot of old people, like, it's always chairmen or secretaries who go. And then, yeah. like, no, I don't, I don't want that. I don't <laughs> yeah, all the lads who are... 25, 26, 27 at the club. Like, why are we still playing this shit? <laughs> like, yeah, it's just, it's just mad. It's like, you're just so far stuck in their ways. It's just, yeah. and like a 46 over, what on earth is that about? What is that about? I think you play 40, like, you'll remember, like, you, you play 46 overs in the league, and then a cup on a, on a Sunday, you'd be 45 overs. Yeah. Ball, but you bowl five less overs as a bowler. You bowl nine overs as a bowler. Like, yeah. There's no logic. There's no logic. No. Like, for me, like, I don't, I didn't, I used to like 45 over cup. I, I sort of got it. Five bowlers yeah. bowling nine, whatever. But it's like, just play 40 or play 50. One yeah. or the other. Just do it like more. If, if you're trying to sell it, so, trying to get someone involved in cricket, you, you try and explain the Dodge Cricket League rules to. Someone you can't, and you're like, and you're like, no, nah, I can't be asked to play that. Whereas you just went, yeah, we play 40 overs, 50 overs, 10 overs, 8 overs, a bowler, then you win or you lose. Like, but like, even when when I was captain, like, I used to have Brookie calculating things for me, like working out exactly where we need to be at a certain point to get X, Y, and Z. And it's just like that, that shouldn't be happening. You shouldn't be stood there in the middle of the wicket calculating. Oh, if I'm not going to win the game, I need to get to one, one seven five, and then yeah. I need to get to one in three. Well, I what? I I, I played. I we, we played the Lily in 2011 at Worksworth, the seconds, and it was basically us or them to go up. And like I don't know, the message got out in Worksworth. Like even in their newspaper, so loads of people came down to watch it, and it got down towards the end of the game, and they were trying to bat out for the draw. To um, and they would have gone up, and they were, everyone was there with like pieces of paper trying to figure out, like if they lost a wicket, who would have, yeah, the thing, and they uh, well, they ended up like mis- someone, someone miscalculated somewhere. We took we got we got the eighth wicket to go another point, so we went like one point ahead of them, and they went into the last over, and they needed they still need like seventeen to um get to like the next. I think we ended up bowling them out. Yeah. yeah, it's just, it's bizarre. It's like when the first year we went up from three and like, obviously they had, they had a couple missing because of that wedding. Yeah. And then, well, they said they were going to have loads missing. I think they had two. Yeah. 
and then um, like they they needed to get 125. I think they lost. I think they lost the eighth wicket, and then Womble realised they had to get to 125 or something. So yeah. suddenly starts trying to tee off, and you're like, this isn't what cricket's about. Yeah, it's like without plagiarism in every single department in you, this game. You're, te- you're teeing off to get to a total that's not the total of what you should be getting anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we got 190 on a tough wicket, and then they're ha- trying to hang on for 125 for eight or whatever. And it's like that's not what cricket's about. Is that when they were coasting it when they were about 100 for one or something? Or was that a different game? Uh, that was that was that, yeah, that was that year after that season. Yeah, now that one we were all over from the start. Robbie was on fire. Yeah, and then I think Charles. I think Charles broke the hearts at the end. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I think he got, I think he got three or four for right near the end and destroyed him. You know, you know, you see, I mean, when Charles not when Charles doesn't get fired up, he's like, but when he's on form and like late in the day, you don't you don't want to be facing Charles, do you? Like, oh, when he gets the bit between the teeth, he's absolutely unplayable. It's like DK DK's decent. DK is, is but late in the day, I prefer to face DK to Charles because you don't yeah. you don't want late in the day, you don't want it firing up. In your chest, and you know, yeah, he's well, it's better at bowling with the stumps when he's just getting near. But like, it's with Charlie, it's like it's when he gets it right and he's hitting the shoulder of the bat, and then he gets his Yorker right, or he gets yeah. the one to go in. And he like, had, he, had that, he had that spell in Division Three, um, and I played a couple of first team games that year. I like, played for Etwell, um, yeah, oh, fucking hell, I was quick that day, yeah. And I was, and he, he broke that broke his hand, didn't he? Broke broke his finger, and yeah. apologized, and apologized for it. But, yeah. <laughs> stood there in mid I remember we were stood miles back. He was snicking them off. Yeah. Oh, we were stood a long way back that day. Yeah, I got I got brought into gully, and I was like, "What's this about?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah that's, he's an absolute handful when he gets it right. Yeah. You like you'd, you'd love him to have a nasty bone in his body. Yeah, he'd be, he'd be even he'd be quicker and he's more dangerous. But he just he's just yeah. too nice. He's a quick bowler. Yeah, good. But uh, the last the last win and nets we had before obviously coronavirus. That day he bowled in there, Jesus Christ, he, he bowled well. He's hard to pick, isn't he? As well, like yeah, he's one of, he's one of those bowlers that you should probably use in a four or five four or five over spell, like get some, especially against a new batsman. If a yeah. especially the crease and bring him on like he's so hard like I've, I've not faced him that a lot but I I struggle to pick him up it's not the pace it's, it's the action yeah well, like for me it looks always looks it's a bit like Ben Stokes it's, it always looks like it's coming into you when in fact quite a lot of it goes away yeah it's hard it's so hard to pick up yeah that when he came back this year like those first first couple of games back keeping to him was so hard. Like trying to re pick him up again. It was trying to pick it. Yeah. 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 I've, I've, I don't think I've ever really kept someone who bowled maybe bowled off the wrong foot. But mm. had a couple of like hard actions to pick up. But yeah, that's what it's when he spears it as well. Like the one that goes down the leg absolutely goes as well. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's better. He should. He should be more. If he had a bad bone in his body. If you're taking 40 with the year. Yeah, easy. He's good enough. He just needs yeah. to believe it. He turned into a decent batsman, though. He's getting... The more games he plays... He yeah. Seems, he seems to be... No, he knows his game better more now. I don't think he knows his game. It, it hits it so straight, though, doesn't he? So it's like yeah. you're going to score runs while you hit the ball straight. Yeah, he's time to tits off it, doesn't he? Yeah, it's a long way. I think, I think that was the, the disappointing thing that when he did leave um, to go to Quandon, that he was probably our best player at the time. Like, yeah, yeah. He, he was, was getting middle order runs, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he was getting middle order runs. He, he, he was going to get towards like July, August, when he was going to, pace was going to go through. Like, yeah. It, uh, but it became, became the catalyst almost, didn't he? Like, he was that. He was making it happen. Yeah. Well, we, we were, what, top second at the time when he left? We second, were, I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
No. I remember that day at Tutbury. He hit most of his runs through third man. Yeah. But he hit he hit 30 or 15 balls to win you the game. Broke the back of it and you've... <laughs> no, I think half of them I think half the total went to Jim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a big Jim hung in there for ages, wasn't it? Yeah, I think I think Jim got a 30. I think he, he yeah. saw that then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he stuck in there like a good one. Based on the distance, though, they're both pretty tall, aren't they? I know he's probably a little bit wider. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, it was a shame. It been, if it stayed, it would have been nice to see what we'd have done. Well, it, 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 everything just went tits up. Isn't it? Um, like, I know we don't like to talk about that season anymore. It's like, yeah, put it, that put was it, what will go wrong. Put, put, it, put, it, put it in the bin. In it, in yeah. It, just completely forget about it. But what you'd had, what, four or five years of absolute perfection as a cricket cricket club. Like, yeah. It, it was something like that was always going to happen. It, I just don't think anyone yeah. realised how much that it was going to happen because it was. It was just a bit yeah. more. It was. It was just. Yeah. It was one of them where circumstances just were against us. Everything went wrong. Everything. Uh, but no mind. Back where we should be. Yeah. T- turned it around now. Got. Got a better team. Got a better team now. Um, yeah. Um. So your third and final offering. Uh, this this is one like what my brother's league play. He plays home games, Prem, and they play multi format throughout the season. Yep. So you, so you play a time game for the first part, then they yep. go into one day, and then they play the time game again back end of the season. So so they play red and white ball. So I was like, that's that's quite appealing. Brings different people into the game. Yeah. Just I don't know how well it's working out. For us, I don't know. Like for us, I, my main one was what you and Nick spoke about having colour clothing and stuff. Like, yeah. but, but I play colour clothing every week. But like, I think that's what modern cricket's about now, isn't it? Yeah, as I, I mean, I'm a big fan of Test match cricket. Like, to, yeah, I love, I love Test love match. Love, love, like, love ever be a Test match and like white kit, red ball. That that is what I'm about. Like, like yeah, I think future of the game. I think you have got to start looking at going down the coloured kit, coloured kit route. But you need massive investments from yeah. UTB. Like you don't necessarily have to. Everyone has to have the, the like your kit made up. Like your first team, you're gonna get you're gonna get your own kit. But if a club yeah. can't afford that sort of kit, they should be sent eleven shirts or whatever. Yeah, yeah, uh, a bit, a bit, a bit like, like football. Yeah. Like if you went like down a football route almost, where if you turn up and you've got eleven shirts, and yeah. so there's always that kit. I don't know. It's just like if you look at these like training tops, they're virtually a one-day kit, aren't they? Yeah. Like well, how you, quickly they're made up. Denby last year, didn't you? In the in that warm-up game. Yeah, like I don't know. I just I think they've got to move. If not all the season, even if you played eleven red ball games. Yeah. 11 white ball games there's got to be I think it's I think, got to be there I think, I think, you, try, I think you trial it in the, um, in the cup games on Sunday we're already playing 2020 yeah. cricket why not why not play pink or white ball with um, coloured kit yeah I think they've just got to especially like our generation obviously we've grown up with white ball but that younger generation coming through yeah. all the cricket they watch is coloured clothing uh, this, yeah, Nick was saying this earlier. Like, obviously, he lived, he's lived with the Kellys for a while, and he's got Dan at one end of the spectrum who loves Test match cricket, and that's what he's doing. And he got Alfie at the other end. And he's like, no, twenty twenty. Yeah, it's the best format. And of the I game. think you need, I think you need that balance to look after younger players coming through. Yeah. So yeah. if you did play even half and half, you play first half of the season is red ball, second half white ball, or whichever way around you want to do it. Just yeah. To well, give that variation, you started like why aren't juniors playing coloured cricket? Colour? Yeah, it's, it's easy to implement it at that level and then bring it into the adult game where they're used to playing yeah. in like the different coloured kits. Like they've, they've started quick cricket, they wear everything, don't they? But yeah, so, it's yeah. just crazy. Like, because like if you look at Australia or or New Zealand. 
they're all playing it. Like, so why can't we implement something similar? Yeah, well, I think the, I think the Prem Cup's colour colour kit now, isn't it? I think the Jack uh, is the league colour kit, is it? The 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 what the, the cup I think is. Yeah. Um, and then the thing the, is, like. I can get the problem with the cup is you could be out first round like that's the thing where yeah, you just wasted all your money on it. Okay. Like whereas if you actually knew you're getting half a season in it, yeah, and if you top up if you top double up his training kit, it's a bit like. It's funny. I'd I'd love the idea of having a 2020 cup competition, like yeah, something, something like where you play like every club in. I don't, yeah, like, I don't get why Friday, like a Friday night. Yeah, I don't get why the Butley and Jackson. I think you'd get more teams if you played in pools of four, so yeah. you knew you were getting three games. If you knew you were getting three games, it's play, worth entering. Play them, isn't it? play them every every other Friday night. Um, yeah. So you got a reserve. You got a reserve Friday night if it does get. Bring up it, it, raises, it raises money for the clubs. Yeah. Definitely. Just, yeah, and I, I think more teams would buy into it if you knew you were getting an X amount of games. You look how many people we had down to that Butley Cup game in Spondon last year. Um, yeah. On the Friday, that was a Friday night game, wasn't it? And, yeah. Um, well, it's probably the best crowd we've had in years for a game. Yeah. And it, if you get, if you, if you get in nights like this on a Friday, yeah. it's, it's nice to go down and have a beer and and watch. I mean, Nick's performance in that game was absolutely incredible to show that he can play attacking shots. Is like, yeah, probably the well, that's it, isn't it? Like, in the top leagues, probably Prem one and two, where you've got some good overseas as well, you're going to get to see some decent cricketers without giving yeah. up your whole afternoon waiting for them to play. Yeah, and yeah, that's, I just think we could be so much better as a country to get. Better comps going because everyone oh, loves twenty twenty. Don't they? It, like it's a nice change up. Everything, everything since like the Ashes in the World Cup last year has gone wrong in this country, hasn't it? Like the cricket, yeah. like you, you look in Belgium especially, like like the England win the World Cup, they have a decent Ashes World Cup. No, didn't wish out win the Ashes. We have like Ben Stokes scoring yeah. having that innings was absolutely ridiculous. So the buzz around cricket, and then like Belgium last year just got rid of their cricket nets. Yeah. You know, like, well, that's just ruined a generation of cricket. In, well, that's in it, Bel- isn't it? Like, Bel- Bulba hasn't got an indoor centre for nets, which yeah. tells you the school, the, that means the school aren't playing cricket because they use those facilities. Yeah. So, you suddenly, your biggest pulling factor to the game aren't playing cricket. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's where money should have been, in, should be invested and that's when they should be. And you like, you won't, you won't see it now, you'll see it in five years' time. When these kids who are playing yeah, well, that's all stars and dynamos don't come through, because they've got. Well, that's it, isn't it? Especially like, especially like because of this virus as well, which means the Euros and World Cup are now going to be in consecutive years. You've yeah. got two two years of football you've got to compete with. Yeah. And you've lost the biggest opportunity to sustain it. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think, it, and I think they get drawn to funding the cities as well. Uh, you always see these ECB drives initiatives in the cities. It's like, yeah, they, what they about the rural areas? Well, so I think they've got a Willows. It's like street cricket. Yeah, but yeah, it's like, towns, this, isn't it? Like, it doesn't, yeah, it's village, it's village cricket. It's like, it, it's the thing what's struggling. Like, you proper grassroots cricket, like, grounds are out, proper out in the sticks. And, yeah. And like, well, that's it, isn't it? Like, like they should be looking to you. Just two, what? And if you went down the river and around here, you've got three or four clubs all on the river. And if you reached out to them, you're going to get some quality players, aren't you? Just yeah, with the social economics. But the, the, we're all after we're, because yeah, like Bell School doesn't teach. But we're all trying to dip into the same talent pool. Yeah, but that's it, isn't it? You got Quandon, Duffield, Buzz. And amateurs probably all trying to dip into um, into Ecclesford for, yeah. for cricketers. Well, we're we're yeah. lucky at the moment that um, make all that lot around the 15s are all Ecclesford and we managed to yeah get them. 
Yeah. But that's it, isn't it? And then if they're not playing cricket at school, like the current crop we've got, if all the mates aren't playing, suddenly they're going to be like, why should I bother playing? Because yeah. you stay, ain't you? you stay in the game because you're mates. Yeah. That's the reality. But my cricket team growing up, we all played football about town. So we all played both together and yeah, you end up having a decent side. Yeah, well, I, I grew up on like a little cordy sack and we we all played cricket. We all we all played cricket and we um, all went to play at Dolly Abbey. Like, yeah, we're all, we're all still playing. We're all still all at different clubs, but yeah, you, you do. You play with your mates, don't you? But yeah, well, that's if, it. If you've got nowhere to go to play cricket. Like no, I need to go to your club. You can probably go to your, your local club because. Cricket is just a summer sport, isn't it? It's not one of these ones. You can't, you can't get someone to, into cricket in December, in November, December, January. No. You can't. No, well, the Prem is in the... It's prime, isn't it? Middle of the season. Yeah. Everyone's playing football. It's like, yeah, you, you, someone comes down to watch... So it's like the um, the Ben Stokes Ashes thing was the um, Bank Holiday weekend, wasn't it? It was the Bank Holiday Sunday in August. Yeah. That's like you... Like we got a few emails saying, "Oh, can can um, my kid come down and have you got like a junior program for like under eight or under under ten? And like, yeah, yeah, um, next year now. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> it, isn't it? Come come back in eight months, and the no. buzz is gone. The buzz is gone by then. Well, that's no, it, isn't it? It's so hard. No, no one's bothered about watching a Sri Lanka series at eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, it's, for the, it's for the purists, isn't it? Yeah. If you're fully engaged in the sport, you might yeah. watch it, but not. Well, that's well, that's the problem, isn't it? But they've got to make the game more appealing. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think coloured clothing is. I don't really. I'm not really bothered about playing coloured clover cricket, but I think for the future of the game, to keep it at a sustainable level. I think. That that's got to be the way you go. You've got, yeah, you've got there has to be there. something. There. Yeah, you, you've got to make you've got to make your rules clearer in local cricket, so anyone passing the game can see what's going on, can know. Well, that's it, isn't it? And but I think I think as a country, we we need a uniformed rule group of rules. So like yeah. you could like if you're on if you go on holiday time, you go to Suffolk. And you, you're there a weekend that you can go and watch the club game and know exactly what format they're playing. Not well, pretty sure playing. Like, even like all the ECB Premier League don't play no. the same rule. And like the next level after ECB Premier League is professional cricket. Yeah. So why aren't you playing the same? Yeah. Like, is? Why is there not the same rule set throughout? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'd, be, I'd be happy at 40 overs cricket. In local cricket, no, we played like when I was in Oz, one day is we were all 40 overs aside, yeah. and we started at one and you finished by six. Yeah, uh, worst case on a really hot day, it was half six, where it's a yeah. little bit slower. But, right, and they talk about oh, like people don't want to play long games. If you played a game which you knew was going to finish at six or so half six, yeah. worst I've, case, I've, scenario, never, I've never seen, I've never seen that argument. Before it's like no, you're playing cricket. You know you're playing cricket. Yeah, all day. But like, and but if people knew that they'd be done at half six latest, yeah, you people buy into it. You keep some people. I think you, you and you do get a better social scene then because you're not like when we when we finish it's like seven o'clock, seven yeah. half past seven. By the time you've shook hands, it's it's captain like sorted all your reports. Reports out that and showered, got your beer, done your team team talk. Gone eight o'clock. Gone. It's nearly. Well, that's it, is it? And if you've and gone down to the wire, yeah. Eight like Sunday, because like, obviously umpire say it should be done by half seven. We all know that some games go on till eight o'clock. Yeah. And it's, and that's the problem. Like for us, like for us, like at Clown, for example, we finished at quarter to eight or something, and you're still at half an hour home at least. I think like it, the rules aren't and that's, to um, the grounds you play at. Because at four at Meadows, right. 
is a lot bigger than a four at Alice Street. Like, there's a lot yeah. more chasing, chasing than the ball. Like, you play on a short ground, you're going to be finished earlier, aren't you? It's a smaller ground. You play in a meadow. Yeah, you? and... But it's the same, but like that's the thing that does the batting points and things at with the rules. Because obviously, getting 175 at Meadows is getting 250 at most. Well, not, not quite 250, 225 at other grounds. And it's. Yeah, no, I agree. I think um, there is some, there is some, some ground. Like, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying Oz is perfect, but they used to have like, I don't know how you calculate, but it's a ratio. So you'd have a ratio of runs uh, to the wickets you take. Yeah. And then the same with your batting. So it comes up with some sort of formula that calculates your percentage. So yeah. you don't get punished for playing on a smaller ground. Because obviously, well, I know, like, you do like, play on a smaller ground. Like the, Le- like the Leicestershire League, that is all win-lose cricket like throughout their division. Yeah. And they send every club a duck of Lewis. I think like, um, they've got like, the, app, the app and like a thing right. like a device what told like Worked out the Duck of Lewis for the scores and that. And that was fair, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. Rather than like, oh, the match abandoned, or oh. so you've played, stayed till half seven to get eight points. Yeah. Yeah, instead it's, of just reducing, the, just reducing the game as a whole. Like, yeah. uh, um, I know, like, Paul Allen, I mean, he obviously plays win lose cricket in the Prem, but I don't think he's a fan of it because. As a bowler, he wants to earn wickets. Where you're going to get a lot of yeah. bowlers now who are just going to get cheap eight, nine, ten, eleven batsmen out at the end of an inning who are trying to trying to win the game. Um, but he likes to earn earn the win. Yeah, I just don't think the win and lose it entices people enough, does it? Like we said no. earlier on. No. Yeah, I, I think people like people like me and you. It's it's a frustrating thing, like, but it's part and parcel of the game. Like, you do like to earn yeah. it, and you do like to be in that. In yeah, that sure. but get, getting people involved in a game, which is getting numbers are getting smaller and smaller every year. You to get yeah. new people, you've got to go yeah, down. It's like we all love. You can't like, I mean, getting a wicket in the last over to get twenty seven, no. but at the same time, you can't. <clears throat> You can't deal. Decide to finish one forty for six, chasing your two thirty. Yeah, that's that's the problem, isn't it? I think like you could score three hundred and lose eight wickets in the process, and they can score two hundred and lose eight wickets in the process, and you get the same amount of bad and bowling points. Yeah. yeah, you've absolutely tongued them off the park. Yeah, it's yeah. it's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's such a bizarre concept. Well, cricket is, isn't it? But you look at all you look at all the rules in cricket. It's it's a bizarre sport. You can't you can't sit in an evening and explain to someone the rules of cricket. It's just, it, no. doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't work. No. No, yeah. and it's almost like wouldn't you think if we were to out to bring out another bizarre rule? Mm. Like the one that doesn't, the one I don't get is you know how they've now got the protected area that bats aren't allowed into when taking guard. Yeah. Like if you want to bat down the wicket at somebody, like I don't get why you should be punished. Like if you want to do that, yeah. Yes, I know your foot's going to go in, go into that danger area. But is it going to make that much of a mark if you? It's not like you're putting your full force like a bowler in it. It's weird. Yeah. It's, it's bizarre. Like, how much damage can it actually actually cause? I mean, every, every even in local cricket, you're entitled to have the pitch rolled at half time, anyways. So it shouldn't really yeah. be different. No. Cricket, and like, there's not and there's not many spinners in local cricket that are going to land it in a foot mark from a forward defence. Yeah. Are they? Like, and if you make if you're making foot footholds like that in fourteen overs, then you need you need to have a word with your groundsman. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's bizarre. Well, the only footballs people create are usually the front foot one. I mean, like, if the pitch yeah. is there anyway, it's a full top. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, like, it's irrelevant where it lands in, in that area, it's full top. It is, it's bizarre. It really yeah. is. But yeah, I agree with you. So, all, all three of them can go in the bin. I can... Yeah. 
I can, yeah, I can change them. Yeah, pretty good chat though. Yeah, yeah. Just, now just, half. <laughs> just, just as long as Nick. No yeah. one's gonna watch. No one's gonna watch all of these, are they? So. <laughs> nah, they might. I don't know. Some, I think for some players, people will. Yeah, I think Nick. I mean, that's like people will listen to Nick. Yeah. How but, much swearing does he do? Not much. Not much. Um, he he calmed he calmed down a bit today. Um, you know the virtual game what we did the other day. He got he got yeah. a message from Fairy saying um basically try to, try not to <laughs> try not to swear. And then um, yeah. I watched the video back and um, counted how many times me and him swore. And after six minutes, I got bored because we were on about 25. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Gee. <laughs> well, Henson Gee, came, Henson came on live and we, we abused him for about two minutes. So. Yeah. It was good, Dan. I enjoyed you today. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to create um, Callum Geary's kit on it. Do you, you see that kit on Twitter? Yeah, that was class. Beautiful, lad. If, if we can the get only that, thing that changed, the only thing that changed is the colour. Yeah, that, I'm not yeah. a huge fan. Yeah, but it was class. Like for him to pull that up, it was. Yeah, it's very I'd, good. I'd, I'm, I might just go around like tweeting places trying to get one, like a prototype made made up for us. Yeah, that was it was so nice. Yeah, but that, that's what that's what I think that's what we'd have if we were to go down the one day we'd have to, we'd have to get that kit made. I think, I think next time we get training tops, we should look to see if we can get it made. Yeah. Because it's so do, nice, that was. They can obviously do custom stuff, can't they, at, at places, the artwork. Just, yeah, it was, it was top to pay, work. We probably have to pay over the odds. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know, man. Then it might be worth getting some bespoke ones there if somebody's willing to make them. Because I'm sure yeah. people would buy them, wouldn't they? Oh yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd have one long, long sleeves. Yeah, definitely. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it's been good chatting with you, mate. Yeah. You got, you got, any you, mate. Pass, you got any messages to pass on to anyone at the end? If anyone's still watching. <laughs> you want to, anyone to pass it on? Just abuse nah. anyone. <laughs> No, nah, I don't think I've got any. Oh, Nick wanted to know about Duffield, didn't he? Yeah, he, he, he basically said, um, ask him how his two net sessions were in <laughs> Duffield. But what was he like? What was he like playing for them? Uh, <laughs> like, there's nothing wrong with the lads or anything. It was just personal choice, really. Yeah. Like, I, I'll be honest. Played that practice game, and I was so used to playing my mates. It was a bit like, just, this isn't... But on the Saturday morning for the friendly, I didn't wake up buzzing for the game. Yeah. Whereas it's, on a Saturday for Meadows, I wake hard, up buzzing. So now, especially, especially knowing you're wicked keep it, when you're like yeah. the focal point of the team, aren't you? And you, you just yeah. don't, you don't feel like you can abuse someone straight away, can you? You're like, nah. Uh, 12 o'clock the first game of the season, just to turn around and go on a ticket. <laughs> yeah, like in the first... Like in the week building up to it, like I was more interested about who was going to keep the medals, who was going to do this, and I was just like, I can't do this. Like, like I can't spend more time worrying about how many J-Row or Nick's got than yeah. what I'm meant to be doing. I was like, so timing you, was never ideal. But were you, are you were you happy last year? Happy last year playing play not as captain, having like none of the pressure of captaincy. Or do you prefer that pressure? Uh, I think as captain, I back better. I'll be honest. Like, but Div Two had a poor year, but the years before that, like when we went up out of three, I got five hundred plus runs. Yeah. On top of keeping, which was a fairly solid year. So. You take that. One, I don't know. It's a weird one. Like, it, I think it, we needed freshening up, and we needed a new, a view of things. Like. Nick Nick's changed the scope of the side. Yeah. Uh, it, put, it put some freshness into it, which was what we needed. So, then it's tough. Like, I do like captaining on the field. I just don't like what comes with it. It's yeah. just a lot of work. I mean, last year it seemed a lot a lot more organised because Paul Allen got involved. It wasn't not because anything before that. I think he got everyone in and like the chats what we had. On a Tuesday night, 
Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. deep in, like, and I don't think you had that. had that from a coach. Yeah, you, and you, I think... You kind of left it, you were... It felt, it felt last year, like, um, there's a lot more stability to, to it. Yeah, like... Then he got, then he got, then he got to Friday was... night and someone dropped out. Yeah, like, the year, be- the year before... Like the cup, like I remember the dip three year when we went up last time, like, and obviously the twos are in the hunt as well. Yeah. And like me and boy, boys, you admit as well, we both used to go hammer and tongs about who's having who, and because you had no other external perspective, you both want to go up. Yeah. And it and it's hard, isn't it? Like you, like, I was almost like saying, I've been, we're I've the first that, team. I think that's a chat you need at the beginning of the season. I mean, you need to lay lay some rules down. Like if it comes down to this, this team takes precedent, and like, I think I think first team always has to take precedent. If yeah, I think the hardest thing is if you put your first team, your first team are in position to go up, and your twos are, and you turned around to your allegedly best eleven players in the club that you're not going up, and we're going with the twos, you're gonna lose a lot of lads, aren't you? Oh yeah, 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 yeah definitely. And that's the but at the same time, I understand the twos want to go up. I, it was so hard because it's like, what's best for the club? What's yeah, but the the way you attract better players, it's a shop window, is, isn't it? Is you've got your first team got to play at the highest standard. Like you, a club like Meadows in like the area that it's in is the second biggest town in in Derbyshire. It's not. It should have a massive catchment area. The, the ground, the facilities, everything about it. We're a Div One Premier League club. Yeah, we're just, just not quite there yet. We build, build no, no, we just. Yet. Yeah, like that, that's the thing. Like, by the time I finish, if like in the first team, if I'd like us to be in Div One. Yeah. No, I, I reckon what I've got another five years probably. I think the current current club players we've got. I think. You look, you look at the players that we signed, though, and then I know they'll talk of like just consolidating your place in Division 2 this year, but if you had a genuine chance, that, that year we went up to Division 2 the other year, I say we were second in May. It was a piss poor division. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't a great division. It's not. Nah, nah. There's a couple of de- there, there are decent players in it, don't get me wrong, but it's not all it's made up to be like. And you get, Meadows have got a couple of players who properly turn games. They've not got like one or two players, they've got five, six players. If they all click in a season. But that's it. Like we, we talk about it every year. Like I'll be honest, there's too much talent not doing the business. Like yeah. like me like me and Jamie, if we're honest with each other, should be getting five hundred runs every year. Yeah. As a minimum, should be. Yeah. Like we, we need to always do it enough. Never have. That's, and, that's, that's and that's the reality. But like the runs that you have scored in your in your career so far, you've been at other clubs, you're getting paid for it. Look at Jamie, for, for instance, he had a one good season at AMB. Yeah. Got funded the year after. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's one of those ones that one year it, it will just click. And you. Yeah. Like especially for him, like I, like you look at him and he's runs higher up and you're like you're as naturally talented as any of them players and oh, yeah, like, I think he'll click one it, I think he'll click one year and get a thousand runs I genuinely think yeah. that'll happen yeah I think mean, I think if he can get a hundred early in a season he thinks, I think he he'll get about, loads he thinks about his game too much I've never seen somebody working at shops and and that like he did, he did it with Paul last year he, he's done it with John Ball and like he thinks there's something wrong with his game, and there's not. It's just in his head. Yeah. It's just all in, if he if he just went out there and just played with freedom, just yeah, um, yeah, I agree. He's got good. good he just, I think he just needs a big score, really, doesn't he? And the monkey will be off his back. Yeah, but, yeah. He obviously has that hoodoo about the thirties, doesn't he? But I think if he got if he just got rid of that. We didn't panic well, that's it, isn't it? Because the amount, the amount of times he gets to thirty, shows 
he's got the ability because he gets yeah. to there easily, doesn't he? And yeah. then uh, yeah. whatever happens. Yeah, it's just that 29 to 39, isn't it? You get past that. It's, it, it's bizarre, though, isn't it? Because, like, for me, if I get to 30, that's when I know I'm properly in. Yeah. And usually I'll go on and get a score. But, like, like for most of us, getting 10 to 19, like, for me, is the challenge. But he cruises through that early part of the that's innings. Me, I mean, it's I, bizarre. I've, I've known Jamie for a long time, like, when he was at under 13s at, at Little Eaton. And that, and he had him and Charlie were the best players in the division. And Charlie was in at Trent College. He was in like not juniors. And Jamie was the better player. He was he was just a little bit. Jamie was just a little bit smaller. That was what what his run was. But you look technically, Jamie Jamie at thirteen years old, you could tell he was going to be a class batsman. You could tell he was always just going to have yeah. the same action and just put the ball where he wants to. Just. I think he just wants to be perfect, don't you? I think he's what, which is not a bad trait. I think he just wants to. I think he wants yeah. to look. What he wants to look good whilst he's scoring the runs. And then, and every third man to four is the same as driving one through the cover to four. It's four on the scoreboard. Yeah. He, does, he doesn't like dirty yeah, runs. He doesn't doesn't nah. like getting a dirty run. Well, that's it, and he looks a million dollars every time. Yeah. And, like there's times when he's has a net and he tells me he's batted badly and I'm like, if I was batting like that, I'd be it's like, too, it's yeah. too hard. It's too hard. Yeah. It's too it's hard. Yeah, he'll be. Yeah, but it's, I guess, I guess for me, it's easy because my runs are dogged. Like I know I'm not, I'm not a fluent sort of player. Yeah. But so from my perspective, it's easy to see those ugly runs. Whereas for him, <clears throat> it is. It's a bat. Looking the part and feeling the part for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah, he's got he's got to smash it through the covers or play a beautiful yeah. on drive. But in reality, if he doesn't think about it, he he does it. Na- he does that naturally. He does it. Yeah, yeah. The best. It looks his best when he looks just to be having fun in the middle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I played like I know it's friendlies. I've played some friendlies with him where. It's just a piss take. It's just like he's got a natural eye for the boy. It's not even like he has to play his way in. No. He's got a natural eye for the boy. He plays so much cricket. Like him and Charlie, he's got the bowling machine at Charlie's farm. So he's, he's just been facing balls since he's about eight years old. <laughs> yeah, he's well. He's one of the he's one of the most natural batsmen I've seen. Yeah, like he's filled in. He's like he's up there. And he, he's some of the stuff he. He pulls off like some of his cat those there's one at Shipley Hall, not last year, the year before he caught that one out on the boundary. And yeah. like that was just class. No one in our team would have been able to do that. No one no one's taking no. that flash other than Jamie. He just he just needs to have more confidence in his own ability. That's, I think so, yeah. That's, I think that's simply what it is. I think you hit the nail on the head there. Yeah. Yeah, just go out there and play with freedom. You, you, you might see this year, like where we play, where we end up playing like seven games for no real re, real reason. We can just go out there and play with a freedom. You might just figure it out for yeah. yourself. You can just go out there. There's no there's no pressure to score. No, or when you go out there, just have a laugh, just okay. figure it out for yourself. Yeah, and I think I think. This promotion, 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 then it's life or death almost, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. But, right, my internet right. is crashing again, so I'm going to get some tea. Thanks All for joining right, me today. No problem, mate.